Hey guys, welcome back to BJ Tech News episode 22 and today I'm going to be going over how to install WSUS. So, uh, the environment is, uh, I have two virtual machine, I have my DC and I have uh, my WSUS server. Uh, my WSUS server is a Windows 2008 R2 edition, Enterprise. And I created an Active Directory, a WSUS admin, logged into it. And uh, we're ready to go. Uh, first things first, you need to download the report viewer. And this is the website right here. Most likely I'm going to put this website on my blog so you guys could go check it out. Click on the link and it will take you directly here. Download it. And it's only 2.8 megabytes. So the installation is pretty quick and pretty simple. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is with your machine, you got to make sure that you push down all the updates to that machine. Fully updated, normally it's best practice for anything you do with a server. You want to push out all the updates on the machine until you get that green check saying, hey, all updates are pushed and there's no available updates. Okay, so you want to start your server manager. And believe it or not, on Windows 2008 R2, uh, Microsoft got smart and they added uh, WSUS as a row. Okay, so we're gonna add a row, click next, uh, and here it goes. W Server Update Services. Check it, and uh, WSUS does need web services IIS for it to um, to work properly so you do want to add those required roles hit next uh, an introduction to web server IIS you guys can read that if you want uh, I will leave everything as default okay hit next read this if you want Hit next uh, a summary of what's going to be installed and hit install and give it some time um, normally it takes a while for this to happen um, if you're doing it on a physical machine like a server rather than a virtual machine it should be quick uh, best practices most likely because WSUS is not a huge thing you do need a a huge hard drive, a huge partition, because there's a lot of updates get, that you're going to be storing within your server. Um, I would recommend installing this on a, on a virtual machine rather than a physical server. So we're going to wait until everything is downloaded. This normally takes a while, so you guys can actually go grab a cup of coffee or some water, juice, or whatever you're you're into. Okay, so when you get to the portion of configuring, most likely this should pop up. Uh, for me, it was at the taskbar blinking. Um, you can read this stuff. It's just a wizard to get yourself started with the Windows Server Update Services. You want to click Next. Uh, you guys can read all this. Uh, I accept the license and agreement. Hit Next. Now, best practices, this uh, CWSUS. It's the actual location where all the update files are going to be stored. Um, best practices, I would normally put it on the D drive, but I was kind of a little lazy and didn't partition my C drive in this virtual machine. But just to keep it short and simple, I'm going to put it on the C drive for now. But I do recommend putting it on the D drive, and uh, Microsoft does recommend that you have to have six gigs of free space. 6 gig is pretty low. There's a lot of updates depending on what updates you guys want to grab from Microsoft. So I would say about 10 to 30 gigs of space would be great or even more. Uh, hit next. Now this portion right here, this is pretty cool. 
you've got two flares that I've done in the past. Um, you could actually have WSUS install Windows internal database on this computer, okay? Or if you have a CQ server in your in your environment, you can actually connect your WSUS into your CQ server and have it, you know, the database somewhere else. To keep it short and simple, I'm going to I'm going to install the Windows internal database on this computer. Hit next. Okay, so uh, web services is recommended to use the IIS default website. Um, that would take port 80. Now, if you guys are using uh, IIS already in your company and you have like a, a website, and most likely it's using port 80, that's going to be a problem. So, if that's the case, you want to do a create a Windows Server update 3.0. Oh, SP2 website. Now, with that, that means that the HTTP TCP port would be 8530. Now, if you guys are doing HTTPS, I believe it would be 8531. I don't have a server, I don't have an IIS server in my environment, so I'm going to leave the default. Hit next. Uh, a brief summary of what's going on. Uh, I'm ready to install. Click next and let it do its thing. Okay, so it's uh, completed, and once you guys get this little dialog box, you want to hit finish. Okay, as you can see in the background, uh, it says installation is succeeded, but you get another dialog box, which is more configuration that you have to do on the WSUS. Okay, so it's basically a non stop configuration with WSUS. Uh, once you get this, you can read all this stuff, hit next. Uh, it's up to you if you guys want to do this, but I won't do it. Uh, hit next. I'm synchronizing from the Microsoft updates. I don't have another machine with WSUS server, so I leave it as a default. Hit next. Uh, I'm not using a proxy server to synchronize, so hit next on that. And this portion right here is basically once you hit start connect, it's trying to establish a connection at uh, Microsoft to make sure that the, the our your WSUS server is able to connect to Microsoft's um, update server. Um, right in the back, you can actually close this, I'm gonna minimize this, and we're going to start to connect them. Okay, you're actually done when the progress bar gets all highlighted blue and the next button appears. Uh, you want to hit next. Now uh, here it allows you to choose what language you want. Um, I know English and that's what I'm going to be pushing out, English updates. Hit next. Now it gives you a little list of all the products that you can download. Uh, I'm going to make this real short and simple. But best practices, if you have an exchange server and you want WSUS to be uh, pushing out the updates to it, uh, you can choose what version of exchange you want. If you have a forefront uh, server, you can pick that. Um, what else? What else? Office Communicator, Office Products, it's all up to you. I'm going to pick uh, Office 2010 and 2007 to be updated to the server and 
all the Windows updates as well as server updates for Windows. I'm just going to pick Windows 7 and Windows Server 2003, R2, and that. Okay. This is up to you guys. Most likely, you're going to choose more options of what I picked. But uh, for, this is, for this episode, I'm just going to pick that stuff. Hit next. What classifications you want. Most definitely critical updates, definition updates, yes. Security updates, yes. You guys can pick whatever else you want for your environment, but I'm just going to leave it as the default. Hit next. Now you got two options. You can syn synchronize manually or you can synchronize automatically, which if you pick that, you actually can schedule when you want the updates to synchronize on your server. I'm going to leave the default for now. Hit next and you're almost done uh, you can actually begin an issue synchronization as soon as you hit finish uh, but I'm gonna hit next it gives you all this other stuff that you could basically do um, but I leave it as is most likely we could create a computer group assign computers to the group that's using group policy that's gonna be on episode 23 so stay tuned and configure auto approval rules which it's up to you how you want to do this. I really don't recommend this because uh, sometimes you just want to go over the updates and push it out rather than having it on auto approved. So I'm going to hit finish. And that's it. So I'm going to go to start. Uh, depending on how you got your taskbar, you, it should be here. If not, you can always go to administrative tools and it should be at the very bottom. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to send it to the desktop as a shortcut. Let's double click on it and open it up. Cross the fingers and make sure everything is working. Hit yes on this. And I will go over couple of things within the console once it loads up okay so once it loads up uh, let me maximize this uh, you see the name of your server, okay? Uh, don't see as much because you don't have the group policy out and you don't have any machines talking to your WSUS as of yet. Uh, updates are broken down this way. I had, I think, I probably don't have any updates as of yet on the machine because it normally takes a while for it to. Uh, start populating so as you see I got a couple of uh, updates already being pushed out so that's a good thing um, so the downstream server we don't have that synchronization it gives you a report right now it's running okay so I'm in 16% once it gets to 100% most likely when you go to uh, let's go to all updates and switch this to any and let's refresh most likely you're gonna see this guy populate. Like right now, I already synchronized 134 updates so far. And the progress is only 17%. It takes a while. Uh, you got a reporting, which is pretty cool. Options, okay, so options is pretty cool. Uh, some of the options that I recommend to automatically configure would be your email notification. Uh, if you have an SNMP server, you really want to configure this so you get like reports um, computers uh, you have two flavors uh, if you use the group policy or registry settings on the computers that means uh, you have to have a specific group and within the group policies you basically telling the computers to go to that group I don't really like that I like to leave it as is so all the machines will go into the unassigned computer group and then it allows me to create groups and I'm able to take the machines and put them in different groups which I show you 
hopefully in uh, episode 23 when I'm creating the GPL. Uh, synchronized schedule, again, you're able to manipulate this, uh, but I'm just doing it synchronized manually. Uh, best practices, you, you probably want to schedule it. Automatic approvals, this is up to you. I really don't like this. Um, sometimes, uh, sometimes there's updates, the security updates, critical updates, or whatever kind of updates. Probably mess up some of the systems in the, in the computer and you really don't want to push it out. You, you probably want to test out um, updates on a testing group or a testing machine before you actually physically push it out. So again, this is really up to you. Okay. Product and classifications, again, you're able to go back and choose what you forgot to get for updates on this section here. You're also able to go to classifications and see, okay, I want feature packs, click it, or service packs, click it, and you're good to go. Uh, update the source and proxy, this is up to you. Again, this is where you actually, whatever mistake you did on the configuration and you want to change it this is where you go okay um, one quick thing I would like to do is within all computers again I don't have any computers in here but I do want to right click and add a group um, and the group that I'm going to create is servers because on the next episode I am going to add uh, BJ dash W sus into the server group and uh, again, on episode 23, I'm going to show you guys how to create the GPO and go over the settings and what's best practice. Uh, so uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this episode. Please comment. Please check out my channel and subscribe if you enjoy watching my videos. Uh, please uh, email me. Let me know if you guys are interested in something that you will want me to uh, do in my future episode. Uh, thank you for watching my video and check you out later. Thanks.